Hello and welcome to the tutorial for Rapid Rig Poser. In this tutorial I'll be covering how to use Rapid Rig Poser uh, to use with your Rapid Rig Advanced Character Rigs. So to begin with I've created a shelf button and call it RRP, short for Rapid Rig Poser, which will bring up a user interface. Now if you're unfamiliar with how to create these shelf buttons go back to the first tutorial for Rapid Rig Advanced uh, version 2 and it will tell you how to install your scripts and create shelf buttons so they're easily accessible. And once I have this up here, I can customize my settings for my user interface. I can choose whether I want thumbs, fingers, toes, the number of everything, if he has two arms, two legs. And once I've set all these, I'm going to hit OK. Now this will bring up my user interface, which I can now use to select controls, do things like mirroring, batch mirroring, and saving and loading. Uh, poses and things like that. So I have two characters in this scene. They're both referenced into this file. It's actually the same character for both. One of them is called cowboy underscore ref zero one and one is called cowboy underscore ref zero two. Now the scripts have been improved significantly especially when it comes to referencing so there's less issues you can run into. So when I have anything selected on this character and I start selecting controls. It works fairly well with referencing. There shouldn't be any issues. Same thing goes now if I were to select this guy. I can start selecting the different controls for him based on what's selected. So when you're working with multiple characters, if you're working back and forth a lot, it's it's fairly easy. You just select one control or more. I'll just select, it's easier to just select one and then you can now customize or you're basically working with this one character so the user interface will only work for the selected character so if you're going back and forth between two characters it's fairly easy to just select one control and then now you can start using all these functions if you tend to be working with one character mostly at a time what you can do is uh, use a name of the character and then this will only work with the specified rig no matter what else is selected so I can type in this long name or I can just load in the rig so it's cowboy underscore ref zero one colon cowboy because that's what we named the character if I want to load in this one I can simply highlight that hit load rig and now it uses that so I'm going to load this guy back in and no matter what I select it will only select or only work on this particular rig so if I have nothing selected and I say grab the main control or the root control, it will always grab it from this rig. Even if I have something selected on this control, it's going to grab this one because I'm telling the username to override my selection. I could turn that off and on anytime I want. So now if I have this one selected, it's very simple to turn that off and on and load in new rigs. All right, so now that I have these two different characters in here, I can start manipulating them, working with them. I'm only going to work with the first one here. This guy's sort of served this purpose just for the demo. Um, now what I can do is use these things to quickly select controls, pose them out, and do whatever I want. And you'll see that it's also based on if I'm in IK or FK. So if I have this guy selected and I'm, I'm saying grab the elbow control, it knows to grab the FK control. If I were to using this guy and I were to say grab the elbow control, it grabs the IK elbow because we're in IK mode, whereas if I tell it to grab the right elbow, it grabs the FK. So it's smart enough to know if you're working in IK or FK. Now back to this guy. If I want to manipulate, say, the fingers on this one pose, so I'm at frame, I'm going to go to frame one here, so I only have a couple poses keyed so far. At frame one, let's say I want to modify his fingers a little bit. So it's very simple for me to select the fingers that I want either here or grab them in here or even use the custom channels here. But for now, I'm going to just use Rapid Rig Poser to select these controls, rotate these in a little bit maybe. I'll we'll grab uh, these two joints on his pinky finger, rotate them out a little bit. Just get the pose looking the way I want. There we go. So now I've kind of posed this out and I'd like this to look the same for the other hand. So the other hand 
is a little bit different, so I want to make it match. What I can simply do is highlight the controls on the finger that I want to mirror across. So I'm just going to grab all of them and the thumb as well. And down here we have mirroring. So I can mirror, which would make the left go to right, right go to left. But in this case, I just want to make the right ones go to left. And I'm, I can turn on all controls, which would move, which would basically mirror everything from the right side to the left. But in this case, I just want to do these few controls for the fingers. And I'll do that, and there we go. So now that finger matches, or these fingers on that hand match. I also have the ability to reset transform. So if I hit reset, you can see it puts the hands right back to their default values. And I have reset extras, so custom attributes like orients and influences and volumes and curvature, those sorts of things are part of the reset extras. And I can turn on if I want to do it uh, to all controls. If this is off, it only does it to the selection. So now that I have that, I'm just going to key that, make sure that works all. So I can select everything and just set a key. There we go. And so now I have this much animation happening. It's not a lot right now. I just have my one contact position here, and then I have my passing position on frame seven. So this is taking six frames to get there. So at frame 13, I would like to have a mirror of this pose here. Right, so he's gonna have his left foot back and his right foot forward. So what I can do is I can tell it to mirror all controls and I can set a destination frame. Right, so I wanna use frame 13, so I can type in 13 or I can go to the frame I want and hit load frame and it will load in that frame. Now I can go back to frame one and I'm just going to make sure I have all controls turned on and I will hit mirror. Now this will take a few seconds because it's got to mirror everything over, make sure the attributes work properly and now that it's there I'm just going to select all my controls and set a key. So now just like that I have a full step from one foot to the other. Now I could continue to do this, keying one foot to the other, but uh, I'd like to do a little bit of cleanup here. So if I look at my toe here, it's going through the ground on a few of these keys. So maybe I want to clean that up a little bit. So what I can do is, oh, maybe I'll just have it move up. So I'll just go into the graph here and I'll look at translate Y, and maybe I just want to have him lift up a little bit quicker. Maybe at frame three, I'll just set another key. So let's lift it up a little bit. Set a key there. Let's see how that works. All right, so now his toe's not going through the ground anymore. And if we look at, say, translate Z, I just have his foot move a little bit quicker. Don't spend too much time fishing with this, but so now we have a little bit better, and I'd also like his toe on his left boot to come down a little bit sooner. So maybe just take two extra frames, and here I want his toe to come all the way down. There we go, nice contact, and I can even go in and add a bit of a toe down, so there's a little bit more of an impact. So kind of. There we go. Alright, so now I have a few more keys happening in here. So I just like to make sure that I'm copying all these keys over and mirroring them. Now I can do it one at a time, so I'm just going to close this now. I could do it one at a time, just go to each one, mirror, 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 
Um, but what I'd like to do is do a batch mirror from frame 3 to 13. Mirror all three of these keys starting at frame 15. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy these keys and at frame 15 I'll paste these in. So now we have the same, oh hang on, I want to grab all everything so I'll select all, copy, this way it's not just Not just the foot control, we'll do everything. So let's paste this again. Alright, so now it should, yeah, so it looks a little weird for the moment, but we're going to mirror all these keys from here on and we'll do a batch mirror. So I'm going to choose all controls and it says start and end frame. So I want to start at frame 15 and our last frame is at 25. And do a batch mirror here, tell it to proceed. It takes a few minutes or a few seconds, depending on the length of the animation. And there we go. So now, if I hit play, I have the beginnings of a walk cycle. So I can go in and start refining it more, doing more with it. But for now, without doing too much work, just with starting those two poses, I was able to mostly just mirror animations to get everything else going that I wanted. Now this does have some other nice functionality. I can do things like my IKFK matching in here as well. So let's say I was on this character. And I'm working in FK right now, and I'd like to match my IK to my FK. So I can simply go in, find the right arm. So this is his right arm here, and I want to tell my IK to go to my FK. And that didn't work because I had the wrong character selected. So let me load in the right one. So I'm loading in the correct character now, and if I go fk to ik he goes back there so i want to do ik to fk and there we go so now if i blend between you can see it's like a perfect blend from ik to fk there we go and i can do the same thing if i'm in ik mode and i want to match to the FK to the IK, simply do that and now I'm in FK mode. So that's kind of it for using this tab. Now in the second tab I can actually save and load poses. So I want to use this rig here and I'm going to say save translate, rotate, scale, save everything and I'm going to choose a name for this. This is going to be uh, actually, let me just put it on the correct frame that I want to save. So I'm going to go to frame one. I'm going to go save pose. And I'm going to call this step one of cowboy. So I'll call it cowboy underscore step one. And I'll save that. Now, if I highlight this guy, I should be able to load that pose right onto him. And it did. But as you can see, they're now one right on top of the other. So that's because I turn on save, translate, save, rotate, save scale for main control. So if I want, let's still do that. We'll turn this off and I'll save that pose again from this guy. So we'll save pose. And I'll just replace that one that we had from before. And I'll highlight this guy and I'm going to go load pose. Grab that one. And there we go. So now it ignored the translate, rotate scale from main control. So now we have two matching poses here. And that's pretty much it. I will be working on more features for this, including saving and loading animation from one rig to the other. And if you have any other questions, feel free to send me an email, uh, dustin at rapidrig.com, or check out Creative Crash and post your feedback there, bugs, whatever else you may want to discuss with me, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can.
Thanks for watching.